Hi, I'm Michael Fry. Last time in the power of curves, I talked about using curves in Photoshop. Today I'm going to talk about curves in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. Now if you haven't watched the power of curves, I recommend that you do so before watching this video because in the power of curves I talk about some of the essentials of using curves like setting white points and black points and making S curves. I'm not going to go over that same ground today. Today I'm going to talk about some of the differences between curves in Lightroom and Camera Raw versus Photoshop as well as talk about some of the default settings in Lightroom and Camera Raw and how they affect the way an image looks and how they affect the way you use curves. So first we'll look at this photograph. It's a rather high contrast image. You can see that the histogram is full here. We have a spike at the left edge indicating lots of black shadows and some areas pushed up against the right edge of the histogram. And down here we look at the defaults in Lightroom. They're the same in Camera Raw and I'll talk about all of these same things in Camera Raw here in a bit. But uh, these are all set at their defaults. Exposure, recovery, fill light are all at zero, blacks at five, brightness at plus 50, contrast at plus 25, and down here in the tone curve we have the Lightroom and Camera Raw default which is a medium contrast curve. And that makes this little S curve here with a little dip in the shadows. Now having this medium contrast curve and the contrast here is set at plus 25 might be fine for many images but if the photograph has a lot of contrast to begin with I think you should see what it looks like without that what it really looks like. So I'm gonna take out this set that at zero and go down and change this medium contrast curve to linear and there we see what the raw file really looks like without that added contrast coming from the medium contrast curve and having the contrast slider set at plus 25. Here's before and here's after and after there's a lot more shadow detail and this is an image I'd rather work with. To me this is a better starting point. And By the way, what is this contrast slider doing? When you increase the contrast here as with the default of plus 25 you're essentially making an S curve. I'm going to go into the new, uh, at least new for Lightroom 3 point curve here and show you basically increasing the contrast with that contrast slider is making some kind of an S curve like that. So essentially having that medium contrast curve and the contrast set at plus 25 uh, you're already starting with one curve added on top of another which is probably not a good idea to begin with. So let me get rid of that here. Now let's take a look at another photograph. This image has uh, quite a bit less contrast than the previous one, even though the histogram is pretty full. We don't see a big spike here on the left or anything pushed up against the right edge. So I can see by the histogram that we've got both shadow and highlight detail here. Now I also have this set at the defaults. Go back to the what they call the parametric curve here. But the brightness is at plus 50, contrast at plus 25, and we have this medium contrast curve. Now this is a photograph that, since it's not as high in contrast, could perhaps benefit from some additional contrast. But I'd rather make my own, make my own curve, rather than having ones set for me to begin with by Adobe. So I'm going to take this out, put that at zero and again set this to linear 
So there's really the sort of native contrast of the image. But there's one other setting I want to talk about here, and that's this brightness of plus 50. This default setting in Lightroom and Camera Raw actually adds yet another curve to the image. So the defaults give you three separate curves on top of each other. I'm going to, uh, actually let me take this out here. I'm going to set that to zero and show you what that brightness setting does. That brightness of plus 50 is essentially putting a point in the middle of the curve and bringing it up and to the left and kind of boosting the midtones. And if you watch the power of curves, you'll remember that the steeper the line of the curve, the more contrast. The flatter the line of the curve, the less contrast. So here, the highlights, the whole upper half of this curve is flat, and the highlights are therefore also flat. We've lost contrast in those highlights. And you can see that the colors here look rather washed out. Well, as if I take that out, remember I already took out the uh, plus 50 here. So now we have no added brightness. And you can see that the colors in the water here are much richer. And the highlights in general, I think, have more snap and punch and life in them. So with this image, I'm going to start with it straight. No added brightness or contrast and a straight linear curve. Now I don't really have much room to move a black point or a white point without blowing out highlights or blocking up shadows. So I'm going to leave those alone here in the point curve and just make an S curve. My own S curve though. And bring out some more contrast and by increasing the contrast you notice that I'm also increasing the saturation of the image. Uh, increasing contrast, especially steepening that line of the curve in the midtones, will always tend to bring out more color and more saturation in images. Now, I'm not saying that every photograph benefits from having the brightness set at zero. Some images that may look great, but I just want to point out that you're not stuck with those defaults. You don't have to start there. And some photographs will look better if you take out that extra brightness and avoid the way it flattens out the highlights. Due to space restrictions on YouTube, I've had to split this video into two parts. So please continue with part two to see how these default settings apply to a different type of image and to see how all this works with Adobe Camera Raw.